Okay, so for today, we are going to be getting into our oil heat uh, course. And obviously, we always got to start with the basics. We got to understand basic electricity. You will hear basic electricity, the terms, and how electricity flows over and over and over again. We have to understand the movement of electricity, how it flows through a circuit, why it does what it does in order to understand the rest of how a oil-fired unit works or even any piece of equipment that's out there that uses electricity to operate. So for air conditioning in HVAC, we have to understand that we are going to be working with electricity. We are going to be working with electricity pretty much every single day of our lives while we're working in that field. When we are on a service call uh, and repairing something uh, that is wrong with a HVAC piece of equipment, it is probably safe to say that about 90% of the time, it's going to be some sort of electrical related issue. It's going to be a failed switch. It's going to be a broken wire. It's going to be an open winding on a motor. It's going to be a open coil on a contactor or a relay. Uh, it's going to be a failed capacitor, um, just to name a few. So understanding how the electricity flows through a circuit, you have a much better understanding on how that unit works and what it's supposed to do when it's supposed to do it. But if you cannot understand, uh, you will definitely not understand anything else. Uh, if you cannot understand how basic electricity actually flows through a, a circuit. So we got to start at the very, very beginning. Electricity really is nothing more than a fundamental element of, of nature. Electricity has to start with an atom. So here we are. We're going right back to real basic science. Okay, we know that atoms consist of protons, neutrons, and electrons. In regards to electricity and the movement of electricity, it's actually the electrons that's doing all of the work. In an electrical circuit, we have electrons that are going to be jumping from atom to atom. And that is what makes electricity flow through a circuit. So here we have a structure of an atom. Okay? So we have our protons and neutrons sitting here in the nucleus of the atom. But it is the movement of these atoms that are going around and around that's going to jump from one atom to the next. As we can see here in this animation down here, you'll see that the atom just moves from one atom to the next all the way down. So the movement of the electrons is actually what creates electric current. So with the use of proper conductors, the current will move in a controlled manner and become usable. So we have to have a conductor that is able to move these electrons easily down the path so that we can use that electricity to do some sort of work. So what is electronics? Well, electronics is simply the study of the movement of electricity through wire switches and lugs. That is the basics of your circuitry in a electrical circuit. You've got to have a power source, you've got to have wires, you've got to have switches, and you've got to have loads. Loads in an electrical circuit is what uses the electricity to do something. Whether that's to generate heat, whether that's to make a motor spin, 
whether that's to make contacts on a contact or relay close or open, we're using the electricity to do something. So conductors are substances like wire, metal, earth, and water where electrical current can easily pass. Keep in mind that the human body is a great conductor of electricity. We're made of mostly water. So if electricity happens to flow through our body, we become a part of that electrical circuit. We get electrocuted or shocked. Okay? So conductors are defined as a substance in which electrical charge carries, usually electrons, move easily from atom to atom with the application of voltage. Conductivity, in general, is the capacity to transmit something such as electricity or heat. So we got to have conductors that are going to make electricity flow. Okay, we're using that, that, that movement to do something. Insulators, on the other hand, those are substances that resist the flow of electrons. Okay, that could be rubber, cloth, dry wood, glass, just to name a few. Okay, insulators are found on the top of power poles and around wires. Uh, so when you look at an electrical wire, you'll see that there's a coating on there. But if you strip that coating out, you'll see that there's a copper wire in the center. So we have the insulator around the wire so that it protects us and the electricity from not shorting out or making contact with anything that it's not supposed to. Okay, insulators are there for safety and they're there to isolate electrical wires. Okay, most insulation you will deal with is going to be either of a rubber or a plastic coating. So electrical production is usually occurs and is done in four, one of the four ways. We have friction, which creates static electricity. We have chemically, chemical reaction, which is done through a battery, a okay, 9-volt battery, a D-sized battery, C-sized battery. We, done, we do it through magnetism, which is how electricity is produced in a power plant. Well, mechanically is how electricity is produced in a thermocouple. Uh, thermocouples are really not found at all in oil heat, but you do find them in standing pilot gas furnaces. Um, just a quick little thing on how thermocouples work. It basically uses the flame from a pilot light to generate its own little millivolt uh, circuit that will keep a, the pilot valve coil inside a gas valve energized so that the pilot valve will actually stay lit the entire time. Um, but we here is an example of how we use heat to uh, generate electricity to keep a device energized so that we can continue to light something. Electromagnetic force is another term that we will hear uh, in many different ways. Uh, another term for electromagnetic force is electromotive force. Okay, and it is that is created by a magnet spinning inside wires. The current that is generated by the spinning magnet is then sent out over the wires to do work. Okay, this is power, voltage, and amperage. So electromagnetic force is really what generators are doing. A generator is nothing more than a gigantic motor that's spinning. And that spinning of that motor generates electricity. That electricity is then sent out over your wires, through your power lines, and then into your home. Voltage, another term that is used a lot, is the potential for electricity to do work. Voltage is measured in volts. So when we use a meter to take a voltage reading, we have to make sure that the meter is set on the V terminal. And we will cover that later in a later lesson. 
Current is the movement of electrons. Current is measured and recorded in amps. Resistance is a force that opposes electrical flow. If there were to be no resistance, then the current would run uncontrolled and would become what we know as a short or a short circuit. A resistance is the measurement in ohms. Now, I like this little picture here. It kind of is a nice little physical representation of what we're covering. Here we have a guy named Volts, and he's trying to push electricity through a wire. The amperage is like our pressure. We got to use some pressure to push that electricity through. But yet we have our our ohms. This guy here, he's forcing it. He's pushing back. If we don't have all three of those elements in an electrical circuit, that electrical circuit's not going to work correctly. We can run into areas of over ampering a motor. We can have issues of burnt wires, short circuits, um, just to name a few issues that can happen in an electrical circuit if the voltage, amperage, and resistance aren't necessarily in the correct ranges, I guess, so to speak, uh, when a unit is, is working. Okay, wattage is the measurement of power. A watt is equal to one amp of current flowing with a pressure or potential of one volt. Watts is used by the power companies to build customers. So we use wattage in lots of ways when we are measuring uh, electric heat elements, how many watts that, that electrical element is actually using. Wattage is used on bulbs. Uh, if you read a, a light bulb, you'll see that it has X amount of wattage that it's going to use in order for it to light. The next thing that we want to talk about is your types of current. There are really two types of current that we have at our disposal when we are working with electricity, and that's alternating current and DC current. So DC current really just flows in one direction. Alternating current will flow in opposite directions, as you can see. Okay, so DC current, better known as direct current, is what is produced by batteries. And this is what is used in automotive. It's used in flashlights. It is used in some of our circuit boards on some higher end HVAC equipment. So direct current is used on a lot of our high tech electrical devices. Direct current is used in a lot of high-end, more expensive control devices in some cases. Uh, DDC controls, for example, is a uh, where we'll probably run into a lot of direct current type applications. Alternating current, better known for short as AC, that is what is available from the power company. Alternating current has a wave pattern to the voltage levels that vary between positive and negative. So in the United States, alternating current changes direction from positive to negative about 60 times per second. When we have a light on in our home or in a place of business, we can't see it with the naked eye, but the light is literally turning on and off 60 times in one second. But if we were to put the electricity on a, a graph and we can measure the sine wave of the electricity flowing, this is what we would actually see. When electricity is off and sitting at rest, we're going to have zero volts. Once we flip the switch and we allow the electricity to flow, that electricity will begin to flow from the positive side 
and then you will actually see it go down to a negative side and it will just keep flowing up and down positive to negative positive to negative positive to negative 60 times in one second so really ultimately AC current is really nothing more than a gigantic circle that's going to flow back and forth 60 times in one second. Frequency is how we measure AC voltage that's shifting from positive to negative. Okay, Frequency is measured in hertz. Usually that's based on times per second. In the United States, we deal with 60 hertz. Europe, we have 50 hertz. Line voltage is another common term that you're going to hear in HVAC. Line voltage is the power coming in from the power company or the power that is being supplied to a piece of equipment. Line voltage is high voltage and in most cases can cause serious harm, if not death, if we are not careful. A lot of your residential, like commercial, uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems will most likely be working off of 120 volts of electricity. Uh, some cases it could be up to 208, 230, or even 480 volts of electricity. Uh, that's why we say that line voltage can cause serious harm if, and death if we are not careful with it. Line voltage is what's available in your wall plugs that are in your home. Control voltage is another term that we're going to hear. In most cases, control voltage is considered low voltage. Control voltage in heating and air conditioning is 24 volts. A lot of your thermostats in residential, like commercial, units are going to operate off of 24 volts. 24 volts is established through the use of a step-down transformer where it's taking line voltage and stepping it down to 24 volts. Okay, VAC, which is sometimes what we normally will hear, is volts AC or better known as alternating current voltage. So you will see on a lot of your transformers on nameplates, you will see 120 VAC or 24 VAC. That's just the voltage that is being used and it's telling us that it's alternating current. Okay, voltage uh, control voltage is designed to be easy to handle and is obviously a little bit safer for us to handle. 